Hello, this is Vern, and today I'm going to share with you five proven attitudes you can start practicing today that will repel breadcrumbers and inconsistent men so you can focus exclusively on attracting a man who is happy to grow a relationship with you. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If you want to learn to attract your ideal life partner, Without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. I'm gonna make a couple of assumptions for this video today. Number one is that you're searching for a lifelong partnership or marriage or both, but not just a boyfriend or someone to hang out with. Second assumption I'm making is that you're looking for an epic relationship. And by epic, I mean a component of physical connection emotional connection, spiritual connection, friendship, excitement, fun, aliveness, the whole thing. One of the biggest complaints I hear from women, and recently when I posted on my YouTube channel, hey, tell me what your biggest problems are, a consistent theme was inconsistency, <laughs> if there's a pun to that. And that means that many women connect with guys, they feel excited, they feel connected, and then they stop feeling the connection, the guy starts, starts flaking off a little bit, he starts breadcrumbing, he stops reaching out as often or putting in the effort. But if the woman is hooked in some way or feels emotionally connected or physically connected to him, it's hard for her to move on and let go. So my idea for this video today is to help you to never again have to waste your time with a guy who's not consistent in pursuit a guy who doesn't know what he wants, a guy who isn't clear on moving things forward with you and wants to either consciously or unconsciously play the game of, I have you hooked, I'm gonna give you the very minimum, which is breadcrumbing, in order for you to not forget about me, but still not move on with your life. Now, this video is divided up into sections. First section is the conditions that create and facilitate breadcrumbing and you wasting time with inconsistent men. Because, we want to focus right now on what we have control over. You can't control the fact that many guys will show up inconsistently, that some guys will show a lot of excitement at the beginning but lose steam along the way, but you can control the way you show up. You can't control who you give your energy to. You can't control who you invest your time and aliveness and passion with. So the first part is the conditions that create the breadcrumbing, and the second part is going to be the five specific attitudes, the habits, the simple things, and by simple I don't mean easy, but I mean they're not complex in nature, that you can start practicing right now to, to, to stop wasting time with inconsistent men, to really give an open heart and your energy to men who can show up with aliveness and with passion, with pursuit and with clarity, and that can take you all the way to that promised land that you're searching, which is the lifelong commitment and marriage. So first, the ideal conditions. The first condition is untested chemistry. There is no wasting of time with an inconsistent guy when you don't have a feeling of chemistry with him. Why? Just don't waste time with him, right? When you connect with a guy who shows up and you don't feel anything for him, you don't feel any butterflies in your stomach, you don't feel sexual tension, then most likely than not, you're not losing sleep over him, you're not thinking about when he's gonna call you or text you, if he messages you, great, if he doesn't message you, great. You might even tell him to stop messaging you if you're not feeling it. You might say, well, it's just a friendship connection or I'm not feeling it. So the problem is when you connect with someone and there's a level of chemistry, but it's untested. And that means sometimes, untested means that you haven't spend enough time with him to know that the chemistry is actually a useful thing for you. Why useful? Because chemistry without pursuit, chemistry without commitment is a waste of your time. Unless you're in your early teens and you just want to experience life, a guy who creates intensity in your life but isn't willing to move things forward is just wasting energy and time with you. Second element that facilitates and creates this feeling of wasting time with a breadcrumber is the fear of scaring him off. So many women connect with guys, they, especially if they feel that strong sense of chemistry, and they don't ask the right questions, they don't share their needs, they don't share their vision for a relationship out of fear of this momentary feeling of validation, of excitement, of a roller coaster of emotions ending. So whenever you are not clear, whenever you don't ask the right questions, before you start sharing what your needs are, 
typically you get hooked with someone who may have a completely different idea about the relationship that he's looking for versus yours, or may have zero idea about what he's looking for, or is simply just wanting to connect and get his validation and, and maybe be energetically connected to you without wanting anything more than that. Third one is an over projection. This is, goes hand in hand with the other two. When you start over projecting, when you imagine that the feeling that you have towards a guy is equivalent to the value he brings to your life, or the feeling that you have towards a guy is equivalent to his level of investment in you or his level of excitement long term with you, that's when you can start daydreaming about him. That's when you can start maybe giving him a little hall pass here and there for not showing up consistently. Why? Because in your mind, the projection, the idea, the vision for what you want that's not even shared with them is worth it. You're almost willing to say, well, I haven't felt this connection with someone in a long time. Therefore, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to ask the right questions because he might be scared off. It's exciting to dream. It's exciting to think that maybe I found a cool guy that can go all the way without necessarily him showing the skills and the pursuit and the intelligence and the clarity and the integrity on the ground. Next one is secondary gain. Secondary gain means that sometimes when a guy starts playing hot and cold, breadcrumbing a little bit, pulling away, you feel a sense and a surge of intensity that is not necessarily felt when a guy is very clear from the start, very consistent, almost, almost boring. Uh, I've connected with so many women who are intelligent and they're very accomplished, but sometimes when guys show up really connect, really clear, it's almost like there's no drama. And even though intellectually it makes no sense that the women would feel slightly disconcerted or bored, they do. Sometimes women start feeling bored when they don't have a guy who's maybe playing those games. And if you're watching this and if you've been played by some guys, you might be thinking, this doesn't make sense. I will revert for you to think about certain men in your life who've shown up, or maybe have great values and qualities, but the chemistry isn't as strong. And maybe you haven't given him the time of day. Maybe you've actually blown him off. So even though you think it doesn't affect you, it might be affecting you in ways that you're not sure about. So secondary gain means that you have variable reinforcement. When, when you get something, but it's not necessarily in a fixed schedule, when you get something every now and then, your nervous system is always expecting to get more of that. I've explained this in other videos. It's the principle of gambling, why people gamble. Why? Because they never know when they're gonna get that next influx of cash. And, and the thing, the fact that it's not consistent makes them crave, moves their brain chemistry in a way that's addictive. And the last one is gonna be an ineffective dating strategy. Why? Because when you have an ineffective dating strategy, you come across great men very rarely. When you come across men very rarely, you kind of want to or have to hold on to them, even if they're not showing the right traits, because in your brain, the principle of scarcity takes over and your brain starts saying, freaking out, saying, well, if I let go of this guy, even though he's not being consistent, God knows when somebody will come around that will make me feel this way. So I think one of the biggest problems I see women facing today is that they fall in love with the on paper version of the guy. He's accomplished, he's tall, he's good looking, so on paper it's great, but she doesn't, he doesn't invest in them the way he needs to. And that's the part that is the dissonant part. Now, before I move on into the five attitudes, I'd love for you to, I'd love to invite you to, if you don't have an effective dating strategy and you know that you could highly benefit from understanding how to create stronger connection with men, how to attract better men, how to not waste time with men, then First link in the description of this video, you, if you click on that, you'll see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching a free training that I have on how you can attract better men and create a more conscious dating strategy. Moving on to the five attitudes you can start practicing today. The first one is going to be an intensity buffer. Intensity buffer means that if your intensity in life, your emotional being, your, the part of you that's active and full of surprise and nuance is full, then you're far less likely to fall for the trickery that some guys will either unconsciously or consciously play on you. Why? Because if you're kind of bored, if you're not necessarily playing at level 10 in terms of intensity, then the Romeo and Juliet soap opera that the guy will play on you 
is going to be a distraction that makes you crave that intensity. You don't want the drama, but the drama is better for your brain who craves intensity than the boredom of something that feels more flatlining. So increasing the intensity in your life allows you to be far less likely to fall for shiny objects. Now think about the movie Jerry Maguire. There's this horrific line that people have internalized and sometimes step into not knowingly, which is you complete me. And that's such a horrible line in my opinion because you want to be full and complete and want more from someone that, so that one plus one equals many instead of half plus half equals less than one. So think about what conditions in your life are present and what are the small tweaks you can make to increase the spontaneity, the variety, the discovery of new things, the passion in your life, so that you're playing life at level 10. I talk a lot about the difference between nine and 10 in life. Nine is boiling water, 10 is steam. One degree of difference that makes all the difference. Number two is clarity in questions. I need you to become a master at asking better questions and expressing your needs from the very start. There is no need to go on a date with someone that you have no idea what he's looking for in a relationship. Why would you put yourself through that pain? Or why would you go on a first and second date without really having that clarity? Many women do this because they feel like, okay, the guy looks cool. He asked me out. He has, uh, I mean, a good vibe. And you might be connecting and starting to spend and invest time energy on someone who wants something very different from what you want. So asking the right questions means knowing what type of relationship the guy is looking for, what is his vision for many things, including his life, including marriage, if that's something you're looking for, including children, if that's something that you're needing as a requisite for entering a relationship with someone, and then being able to express your needs, like what makes you feel happy when you date someone? What are the things that make you excited and what are your turn-offs in connecting uh, with men? When you have the courage to be clear from the start, and it doesn't mean you have to interrogate the guy, but you can definitely ask the guy, hey, he's connecting with you online and wants to ask you on a date. Nothing stops you from having a five minute video conversation where you can ask him, tell me a bit more about what you're looking for in a relationship. Hey, I'm not looking for a relationship. Great, no need to go on a date. Or I'm looking for something that is spontaneous and that doesn't have labels. Don't go on a date with them if you're looking for marriage, right? Number uh, three is pacing yourself for the physical stuff. Now, obviously I want you to create a connection with someone where you have all the elements. You have physical, emotional, spiritual. However, when you start a connection with someone, if you let the physical stuff take over, you're going to feel more attached than you need to and your brain is going to shut off the red flags that you need to pay attention to and it's going to be harder for you to stop getting hooked to someone who might, one week later, after he had sex with you, start breadcrumbing you and you start feeling like your world is ending. So when you pace yourself for the physical stuff, not only does he get a chance to prove himself in a healthy way, you're not playing games, he's simply just showing up the way he should, so you get to know him, he's creating emotional connection, and you're not feeling as attached to someone who may not be the right fit for you. Number four is rotational dating. Why is this so important? Because when women share with me that they don't like doing this, that they only connect with one guy and one guy only, that means that you connect with one guy, and if the guy is not who you want him to be, it's almost like he's your boyfriend without boyfriend privileges, right? He doesn't invest in you like a boyfriend, but he has your heart and soul and time as a boyfriend. I mean, that's a lose-lose game in my mind. So rotational dating means you're gonna date more than one guy at a time, you won't have sex with any of the guys, you won't get physical with the guys even. Uh, I mean, you'll connect with them through the, through time. You'll choose maybe one that you'll start being more uh, physical with. But at the beginning, you're going to pace yourself. You're going to create fun times. You're going to ask great questions. You're going to date consciously. And you're not going to feel the need to hold your breath for someone who's not showing up. Because this allows you to, in person, only act passionately, only act purposefully with guys who are being purposeful with you. And number five is healthy, clear, and specific boundaries. And I'm talking about boundaries of time, boundaries of sex, boundaries of exclusivity. So when a guy connects with you and he starts showing up in flaky ways and he expects you to 
continue dating him without asking the question or, or figuring out why he's acting that way, then you're, in essence, training him to be that way. So boundaries in dating means that when a guy starts showing up and he disappears for a while, that if he wants to date you out again, you might figure out first why he disappeared and stop connecting. You're not blaming him. You're not pushing anything on him. You just want to know what's going on. Why? Because otherwise, you're basically saying, in essence, what you're doing is cool with me. I'm cool with being uh, inundated with, with beautiful messages and with a great date. And then you disappearing, not knowing where you are. I reach out and not no message back. And it's just a waste of time and energy. I mean, I know that this concept seem challenging sometimes to put in place, but they're simple in essence. And if nothing else, they require a great degree of self-love, of self-worth and confidence. The more you show up with self-worth and confidence, the more you're likely to elicit the same from someone who's showing up in your life. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. If it is, as I shared, if you want to uh, get my free training, first link in the description. If you enjoy the video, click like or thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. And last but not least, if you like what I'm sharing with you, you've been at this game of life for a while, you're intelligent and you're accomplished and you haven't been able to create the result that you want, you might highly benefit from my hand holding and help so that you can cut down the time significantly it's going to take you to attract the right person and do it with a lot less pain and anguish. And if that's the case, second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.